culture of policing in relation to local policing form. Um, to start off with, we have to point out that in Ireland, the Garnishia Con is we police by consent. We do it by the will of the people, for the people. It's always been that way and hopefully it will continue to be that way. We're more than a law enforcement agency, as you know, anyone that ever interacts with the Irish Court and sees all the things that we do, um, we're more a social service than a law enforcement agency. So with that in mind, it is how we're approaching the local police forum and how we deal with them. So for this conference, we propose that to ensure that policing continues to operate with the, with the consent of the people, and to ensure that the community receives the policing it wants and it deserves, it, it requires that there must be dialogue, discussion, debate between the parties, and we want to present a model of that. Sorry, I was going to go. Yes. Section uh, the Garda Shia Act 2005 provides for the establishment of the Joint Policing Committee, JPC, in each local authority administrative area. And what's interesting about this is it was tied with the local government structures, the JPCs. It started in, in, in uh, so that's, and in 2006, JPCs were piloted in 29 local authority areas. In 2008, JPCs were set up in all of the 140 city and town council areas. So it was a rollout of the structure that was tied into the local government service. Now the purpose of the Joint Police Committee, or the JPC, is to provide a forum where a local authority and the senior guard officers responsible for the policing of that area with the participation of members of the Iraqis and community interests, residents, groups, etc. Cons consult, discuss and make recommendations on matters affecting the policing of that area. Some of you may be, be aware of these general policing committees, but most people are not. In addition, Local policing fora were established at neighbourhood level. Neighbourhood level, that's important in terms of the fora. Uh, the local policing fora intend, in a more informal way, to deepen the engagement between the Gardaí, the local authority, and the neighbourhood communities. Okay, the role of local policing fora, which I'm involved in. Michael was the former chairman of. Uh, it's provided for in the Garda Shield Act of 2005, Section 4, where it says the local police forum will provide a mechanism through which the community, the Garda, the local authority, and public representatives, other statutory agencies, and other stakeholders as required come together in a formal, structured way. The local police forum it enables the free flow of information between all those parties. Um, they can come in, they can sit down, discuss issues that are relevant in the community, there and then, and come up with ideas on how to solve those issues. Whether it's a Garda action or whether it's a council action, between us we decide what can be done together to solve the issue. Local police and fora were established in six local authority areas where lo the local drugs task force was already in operation, and that was done in 2009. And those areas were in Cork, in Dublin, Dunleary Rackdown, Fingal, South Dublin County Council, and Bray Town Council. We are now going to present you a case study of one of those forests that both of us were involved in as, an, as a case study for how these, how these worked. Okay, a brief history of it is in 2010, following discussions with my organisation, our drugs task force was already operational in the area, the local community developed the project, the local council. Community representatives that we work with and engage with, uh, the local police forum was set up and the first mention of the meeting occurred in October 2010. It was envisaged that the local police forum would uh, develop a multi based action plan which would include the continuation of local public consultation missions, meetings. And these are ones that the Garda Shikana had initiated in the area prior to this, where we went out into the community, we invited everyone that was relevant in the community to come on in talk to us, tell us what their issues were, what their problems were, and what they thought we as an organisation could do to solve them. The functions of the local police forum, as stated in the Act, which we have to comply with because it's law, it's are to improve the communication and relationships between the Garda, the local authorities, and other relevant stakeholders in the local community, the residents of the area, uh, community associations, resident associations, neighborhood watch associations, and so on. 
shared and exchange relevant and appropriate information, including crime data of local areas. Now that's huge, because up to this we were restricted. We're not allowed to give out crime information. It goes to the Central, Central Statistics Office, they use all the crime stats. My organisation doesn't. So the fact that we're allowed actually to discuss stats and figures at the local level with the community is fantastic. Uh, identify issues of concern in relation to policing, anti-social behaviour and state management. A huge thing for the local community. They want to talk about the issues that affect them, affect their livelihood, affect how they live in the area. Provide feedback and progress and hold agencies accountable. After we have our meetings and we agree actions, at the follow-up meetings, the local community, the council, whoever is going to say to me, that from my organisation, well, what have the guards done about this issue we discussed? What has happened since the last time we met? And we meet monthly, so there's a relatively short space of time in between each of our meetings to do the follow-up. Develop guidelines and structures to manage tensions and divisions that arise within communities as a result of alcohol-related problems, drug, dealing, uh, drug use and antisocial impact. And again, towards the end of the review, some quick examples of how we've done that. Assist agencies to work together in a more coordinated manner in response to local problems. And that could be some issue that would arise in relation to public order issues, where we in the council will tackle it. We will tackle it from our perspective as enforcing law or as in uh, dealing with the people that are there. The council will tackle it by way of improved street lighting and so on to discourage the people from hanging around in the areas that they can start hanging around in. <coughs> and then organise local public meetings uh, on topics relevant to the issues we've addressed. And just on the next slide, we'll give you an example there. 2010, we had three meetings, 11, 12, 13, 14 so far this year. We've only had one, but we've one scheduled. The local elections came along, but we didn't hold the meeting then purposely because we didn't want to put the police for the use for grand standing for anyone local for the elections, so we purposely didn't do it then. The case studies then, some of the things that we have discussed that have come up that we and we devised solutions to antisocial behaviour on the Dublin bus. Huge issue for the people who live in the area because if the antisocial behaviour gets too bad, Dublin bus don't go through the area. So the local community have no buses together. So what we've done on those issues, we in the Irish can't actually patrol the buses, get on and off the buses as they go through our area, in uniform, we're seen on it. We do operations in conjunction then with Dublin bus inspectors who get on with us. So we do them separately and jointly. And we've also published information in the local magazine that goes to the area for the local people to explain to their kids if you mess on the bus and the bus gets pulled, it's us, it's their parents, their grandparents and so on and so forth because there's no bus to service there for them. Drug dealing and joyriding, uh, where people have pointed out areas where drug dealing has happened. We, we from a Garden Street Corner, we tackle it one way in that I have a drug unit and we usually let them operate first because then they can identify the culprits and we can gather evidence to sustain criminal prosecutions, which is part of what we do as you know. And then when we've done that and arrested the people, we then start doing uniform patrols. So people in uniform are patrolling the area where it formally happened to deter people from coming back in to start the whole cycle all over again. And again, as I mentioned, the council maybe street lighting or something else may be needed in the area and that will happen. Halloween, huge problem in my area, has been for years because of the antisocial behaviour that goes with it. We've been working for years now with our other agencies to try and provide facilities and entertainment and such like for the kids of the area to discourage them from antisocial behaviour and to engage them in controlled enjoyment of the event so that the antisocial stuff is taken out of it. Public order in the states, shopping centres and such, again with the council where we've identified the areas, we will do our patrols in it to deter the people from gathering there. The council will come on and improve the street lighting or maybe block off laneways or put up bollards to prevent access of vehicles going in and out. We discuss what we think will work in the area. It's not a one fixed at all, so it's individualised for the area to have a problem that's identified to us. Parking at schools, huge issue for everyone. It's the parents that are doing it. When it was pointed out to us and it was becoming dangerous for the kids, we ran a campaign in the schools where we went into the schools to explain to the parents that it's your kids, somebody's going to get hurt. Um, we then followed that up. Today, if you get a fine on the spot for parking, you don't actually see it because it's electronically done. So when it arrives in the post, you know you've got a parking ticket. But what we do, we devise little notices, and we went there and put them on all the windscreens, saying, you're parked illegally, next time you come along, we're actually going to issue a fine on the spot. So people got it, like, ooh. So without finding them, 
We try to encourage them not to park, and then of course we follow them and wave and issue fines on the spot to those of people who are fines on the spot. We said no, we can't do that anymore. Playground areas, um, a huge issue where a lot of investment has been in where money has been spent on the area and then vandalism and such like will occur to, to damage it and you can't use it. So again, we would do patrols. The local council set up CCTV for us in the area to watch it and so we can identify culprits. And between us, then we're able to eliminate the vandalism of the playgrounds. So the playgrounds are still there, the kids can use them. And that in itself reduces the public ordinances because the kids now have somewhere to go and a place to play that is successful. So, we, in summary, we would propose to this mediation conference that the local policing forum is a very successful mechanism for integrating local authorities that she, Garda Shea Kana, uh, in the common goal of ensuring uh, public safety and allowing people to go about their daily lives in a peaceful way. To conclude, then, we say that the police forum enhances the cooperation between the local residents, their, the local authorities, and Garda Shea Kana. And it's in a common effort for all of us to improve the living conditions of everyone that's resident in that area.